All right, hello and welcome back to the dark room. Today we are going to be working with some 120 film and we're going to actually be developing this. And while we're also developing this, we also actually have another roll of 120 film that's currently in this camera right here. Um, and this camera is a Kodak Hawkeye number no. two box camera. Um, it's real, real basic. When we say basic, you basically have your front shutter, you have a viewfinder that really does not work very well at all, and then you have your shutter, which operates both ways. So, about as basic as it gets, but this is a really fun camera because even though it is from 1926 or the 1920s, it actually shoots in 120 film. So, you can still take just normal rolls of 120 film and run it through this camera, even though this camera is definitely up there in age. So, let's take and pull this film out of here that we just shot. And so this is a little bit of a different film. This is actually a Fuji Acros film, uh, 100 speed, a lot of fun. Uh, the other thing to mention is, the other film we're going to be developing today is actually some Kodak T-Max 400. So these two films are different, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is that we're going to develop these both at the same time. And normally, that's a problem because right now we have our Patterson tank, which we've talked about before. And the Patterson tank is big enough to run one roll of 120 at a time just because it's a lot taller like this. Um, if we were running 35 you're usually able to run two rolls on there but when we run this at 120 we uh, basically are only able to do one roll at a time uh, with this tank at least. But in our case we don't just have this tank. We'll set this out of the way. In our case we have this guy. Uh, this is also a Patterson tank, just a larger version of it, uh, where we could only run one roll of 120 on that. We can actually run up to three rolls of 120 on this larger tank here. So instead of having to do two separate development times tonight, we're just going to be doing the one. Um, and that's how we get back to talking about the differences in these two films. So this is a Kodak 400 speed. This is a Fuji 100 speed. Uh, but what I did is I already went ahead and looked on our development charts and looked up the times for these films. And how it lines out is the Kodak is calling out 12 and a half minutes for development time for it being at a 400 speed film with a 1 to 2 dilution. Uh, the Acros is right at 13 minutes. So what I think we're going to do is just kind of cut and go with 12 and a half minutes development time and just underdevelop that 100 speed film a little bit. Um, part of the reason for that is with this older Kodak box camera here, uh, I've talked about this before, a lot of times when you get these older cameras the shutters weren't very fast because film back in the day, well it wasn't very fast. Uh, higher speed films really weren't a thing back when this was in production and in normal use so they had these slower shutter speeds but also what you see happening is that over time this actual shutter mechanism here that uh, controls that that noise you hear is the shutter uh, over time that spring gets older it wears out so you actually end up with a shutter speed that's slower than what this was actually even supposed to be at uh, so we're ending up with a film that's going to probably be a little overexposed so to counteract that like I said we'll just uh, back off that development time a little bit and we'll cut our losses at that 12 and a half. So I'm going to set that out of the way and then what I'm going to do is go into the dark room and I'm going to spool up both of these rolls of films onto these two separate rolls for our big Patterson tank and then we'll talk about our uh, development times. So actually well we can talk about it now even. Uh, so what we're going to do is do 12 and a half minutes development time and in this case, we're going to need 1,200 milliliters of developer to fully submerge this film. 
uh, and at a 1 to 2 dilution what that works out to be is 400 milliliters of our developer and then 800 milliliters of just uh, clean water or in our case filtered water that we will mix in with that so that's going to be our developer so like I said get these two rolls of film on here covered and we'll get it developed and then we will uh, hopefully review the pictures that we got off this box camera and kind of show you guys what kind of images you can get out of a camera from the 1920s all right so we got everything washed out and now we're ready to take a look at how our film went all right uh, this top roll here was our 100 acros so we'll pull that off and take a look um, and you can see so the interesting thing about the Kodak box cameras um, a lot of other 120 cameras I have actually shoot a square six centimeter by six centimeter image uh, 120 film being six centimeters wide uh, the interesting thing about like I said about the Kodak is it actually shoots in a six by nine so a little different aspect ratio once again you get kind of a cool uh, cool frame out of that so as you can see we got some shots there it looks like they turned out pretty good set that to the side nice these are all kind of just portrait shots out during snowboard practice today so very cool stuff it's a very fun camera to kind of pass around and have people try to because it's something that really piques a lot of people's interest so awesome this one turned out good all right take and hang this one up to dry and then we'll take a look at the uh, Kodak 400 that we have on here all right so first roll out of the way with that 100 ISO acro so now we can take a look and see how our Kodak T-Max 400 turned out uh, and this one doesn't look quite as promising. Uh, sometimes with the older cameras, it's a little hit or miss. Uh, there's some images here, though, definitely, but not as sharp or not as uh, contrasty as that 100 speed. But we won't know until we get it on the scanner and take a look at what we have. So. So these are interesting. These were actually all up on the North Shore, up on Superior, up by Duluth. So it'll be interesting to see how these turned out. Some of these look really good, actually. So once again, we'll just have to get these on the scanner and uh, see how they turn out. So let's go do that. All right, today is tomorrow, and we have our negative scanned in and did a little bit of contrasting and uh, a little bit of grading there to get the levels right to make the most out of these prints but uh, I really like how a lot of these turned out this first roll here is um, from the day out at the ski hill and this is on the Fuji Acros 100 and you can see it gets a really nice smooth grain out of this film and the contrast really did well um, when you're talking about working with a box camera that's a single element meniscus lens um, so you usually end up with a really low contrast image, but thankfully through kind of tweaking the levels when we scan in our film and then working with it in Photoshop, we can bring that contrast in and kind of work with it and get an image that still has kind of that foggy, you know, kind of vintage look to it, but really still has a little bit of clarity. Um, and like I said before, these are 6x9 images, so they're awfully big but that resolution from that lens is still pretty low and you can see it in some of the spots on here where you maybe don't have the most clarity um, also something with these you know being at a fixed lens and there's a fixed focal length on some of those shots a little out of focus or you know the subject we were going for wasn't quite in focus and the background was there um, <clears throat> moving on to this other roll of film we shot this was actually that Kodak 400 uh, and so this Kodak was actually a little expired as far as film goes so it seems like some of that contrast and some of that exposure seems to be a little under uh, a lot of these shots also were under kind of a, a cloudy lighting maybe not the best 
conditions for that box camera but that's part of figuring out what works is by trying it out and seeing what we can do uh, with a film as well as a box camera so in these shots here you can see there's a lot more grain with it being a 400 film and really just some of the contrast in that is lower and part of that is like I said that meniscus lens from the box camera uh, but the other part of it is being its expired film you kind of lose some of that contrast uh, with the age of it. Still though, I really like how a lot of these turned out from the North Shore. Kind of really interesting shots. Um, one of these here, this would have been kind of like a morning shot just after the sun had come up. So you had a direct lighting coming toward us there and you get kind of this strong backlit of uh, shovel point there. So really fun stuff and I really enjoyed shooting with the box camera. Um, in the future we'll do a lot more with medium format, shoot on some sharper lenses in our lineup. But uh, until then, this is what we got for today, so thanks for watching.